I am a female on a trip by myself from San Antonio, Texas to Huntsville, Alabama to visit my mother. I'm originally from Alabama, but went to college at the University of Texas in San Antonio and ended up meeting a guy and getting married. We both have a house in San Antonio, but I do like to visit my parents once in a while at least. On the way, I was getting tired and decided to stop at a hotel. I do prefer the hotels like a Holiday Inn Express or a Courtyard. They were nice enough for me and they had breakfast. I could be in and out and have everything I wanted. I arrived at the hotel and noticed that there was someone else parking their car and shutting it off at the same time as me. He got out of his car and looked at me. I waved high and started heading in the front entrance. The guy followed me in, obviously, as he must be checking into the same hotel. My receptionist greeted me as I walked in and checked me in. I asked about breakfast as I was pretty excited about that in the morning. I also made sure that they had a hot tub, and they did. Perfect, I thought. When the hotel staff handed me my card and said out loud my room number was 204, the man I saw earlier walked by and was looking at me. I gave him an awkward smile and looked down at my key. I did not really want the guy to hear what room I was in. Not that he was a crazy killer, but you just never know. I got to the room and put all my stuff away, laid on the bed, and relaxed for a minute. I got the surge to go to the hot tub. I always bring my swimsuit on these long trips just to get in the hot tub at these different hotels. I went downstairs and entered the pool and hot tub area but that guy was in the hot tub. He was a good looking guy, so I guess it wasn't the end of the world. He wasn't some crazed person with boils and scars all over his face either trying to kidnap me. So I decided to get in and just take my chances. We started talking and he was actually pretty fun to talk to. I told him all about my trip and where I was going. He listened as I talked about my life and it was nice to finally talk to somebody. He invited me to go have a drink with him at the hotel bar, and I decided that wouldn't be a bad idea. He was pretty cute, and I was having fun. I know I have a husband back home, but everybody wants to be wanted by others sometimes. It keeps the inner confidence going. I took a shower and got dressed. As I arrived at the bar, he was already there with drinks and an appetizer. I think this guy was trying to get something tonight but I was not going to let that happen. As I drank the pina colada he got for me and eating the appetizer, we were having a great time. He was telling me stories of how he started a company and he was doing well for himself. He told me he was currently on a trip. He was on the road to scout an area to lay ground for a new location. As I was listening and looking into his beautiful eyes, I started to get really tired suddenly. I tried to shake it off, but I was starting to have issues with my motor skills. I was having trouble picking up my fork. I was hoping he didn't notice, because I was starting to have some major thoughts. I had told this guy way too much information about me. He knew I was all alone and not expected at my destination for some time. I was a sitting duck and knew I was in danger. I told him I had to go to the bathroom in my best impression of an upbeat personality. It seemed to work and I went down the hotel hallway where the bathroom was located. I went right past it and got to my room as soon as possible. I had trouble getting my room key in the slot, but managed to do it. I slammed the door shut and put an extra lock across the door. Then I fell backwards. I woke up on the floor to the hotel front desk calling me. I answered the phone. The front desk said, it's 3 o'clock, and checkout was at 11. They said they had been calling me since 11, and even knocked on the door multiple times. I was out cold. Then I remembered what happened last night. I felt so stupid I took a drink from a complete stranger when I was all by myself. But I was so glad I was able to get out of the mess I had made. I explained to the front desk what happened, and they were shocked. They did not charge me for an extra day, and apologized for what happened. They reviewed the CCTV footage and told me that this man had been caught stalking female guests before. The bartender was new though and did not recognize him. I got back in my car with a splitting headache, but was okay. 
when you are on a road trip, be careful who you trust. Sometimes evil people see an opportunity and try whatever they can to get what they want. I arrived at an old, decrepit hotel in the middle of the night. The sign out front was barely visible through the rain, and the paint on the building was chipped and peeling. I was reluctant to stay at this place, but there was nothing else for miles and I really had no choice. It was either the car on the side of the road or this place. There was only two cars parked in the parking lot. I guess there weren't a lot of people staying in this weird hotel in the middle of nowhere. I grabbed my bags and walked towards the front entrance. As I stepped inside, I was greeted by a musty smell and a reception desk that was empty except for a small bell and a sign that said ring for assistance. I rang the bell and waited. A few minutes later, a tall, thin man appeared from the door behind the desk. He had a strange, unsettling demeanor and seemed to be avoiding eye contact with me. Welcome to the Hotel Delphine, he said in a monotone voice. I'm Mr. Johnson, the owner. How may I assist you? I asked for a room for the night, and Mr. Johnson handed me a key without a word. He pointed towards the stairs and told me to follow the red carpet to room number 312. As I made my way up the stairs, my creepo meter was going off about this place. The red carpet was threadbare and stained, and the walls were covered in cobwebs. When was the last time someone actually stayed here? When I finally reached my room, I was relieved to see that it was at least cleaned and well maintained. I tried to shake off the eerie feeling I had and settled into bed for the night. But just as I drifted off to sleep, I heard strange noises coming from the hallway. It sounded like someone was dragging something heavy down the corridor. I tried to ignore it and go back to sleep, but the noises only got louder. Eventually, I couldn't take it anymore and I decided to take a look and see what was going on. I opened my door slowly and peered out into the hallway, but I didn't see anything. As I turned to go back to my room, I noticed a faint light coming from under the door to the room next to mine. I couldn't resist the urge to see what was going on in there, so I quietly made my way over and noticed that the door was cracked a little bit, and I could see in slightly. I know I shouldn't have been peeking in there, but I'm nosy, so sue me. Inside, I heard the faint whispers and sound of something dragging across the floor. I knew I should have just gone back to my room, but I wanted to know what was making that noise. I thought there was no one else here, but maybe there was. Were they another traveler just trying to get through this desolate part of land before reaching civilization once again? I slowly opened the door and peered inside, and what I saw sent shivers down my spine. There was a group of people in the room, all dressed in red robes and chanting in a language I didn't understand. In the center of the room, there was a large stone altar with a naked woman lying on top of it. I realized in horror that the main person leading this ritual was none other than Mr. Johnson himself, the hotel owner. A group of people surrounding the naked woman were performing some kind of ritual. At that point, I knew I had to get out of there before they noticed me. I did not want to be the next one to be sacrificed or whatever they were doing. I stumbled back to my room, my heart racing with fear. I packed my things as quickly as I could and fled the hotel, never looking back. I never found out what happened with this strange group of people, but I knew I never wanted to see that creepy hotel again. I was having car trouble in the middle of the night. This was the worst situation to be in. Thank God for cell phones. I was able to at least find a hotel that seemed to be a mile down the road. This was a great relief to me because I was not going to be able to do anything about my car until the morning. Unfortunately, my car stopped a mile away from the location. So I got out with my bag and started walking. I walked the mile dragging my rolly bag when I finally arrived at my destination. However, this is not what I expected at all. There was something about the Hotel Casanova that made my skin crawl. It was an old building that seemed to be abandoned for years. The windows were all broken, and the paint was chipped and peeling. But I was only staying there for one night because my car broke down on the side of the road, and it was the only place I could find. 
coming up on the place and seeing the condition of it. I was starting to worry that this place wasn't even open. If I couldn't get in tonight, what was I going to do? Walk a mile back? As I walked through the front door, I was immediately hit with a wave of musty, stagnant air. The lobby was dimly lit and the floorboards creaked under my feet. I could see cobwebs in the corners of the room and a thick layer of dust covering everything. I walked up to the front desk and there was no one there. I called out multiple times, but there was no response. The hotel had power, so someone must be around, right? After I walked the lobby and saw no one in sight, I decided to just go behind the counter and grab a key. This won't end bad, right? I made my way up the creaky stairs to my room. When I opened the door, I was immediately hit with the smell of decay. The room was small and cramped, and there was a strange, musty smell coming from the bed. I decided I am just going to lay in the bed with my clothes on and set an alarm for the morning. If I can get some sleep, I can take care of all my stuff and get the hell out of this crazy place. I definitely locked the door to the room and checked it twice. I was not going to get axe murdered in the middle of the night. As I tried to ignore the weird situation that I was currently in and just get some sleep, I couldn't stop thinking about this hotel. I was so tired from driving though and really needed a little bit of sleep to get through the rest of the trip. I was hoping for a quiet night, but that's not what happened. As I lay in bed, I could hear strange noises coming from the walls. It sounded like someone was scratching the walls or dragging something across the floor. I tried to brush it off as just old pipes or something. The longer I lay there, the more the noises grew. There should be no noises since there's no one in this abandoned hotel, unless there is someone here that I have not seen. All that was going through my mind was some crazy squatters with machetes that would kill me if they found me. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I start hearing loud bangs outside my room. Now I was getting really scared. This is getting real, and I didn't want to get murdered by this crazy shit going on in my head. I panicked and busted a window out. I grabbed all my stuff and got through the window. I started walking towards my car, and as I was looking back at the hotel from a good distance, I saw five guys come out of the front entrance with machetes, looking all around the area for me. I eventually got back to my car and crawled in the trunk through the back seat. When morning came, I called the closest tow company I could find and paid extra to get the car to a legitimate servicing station, miles from this eerie hotel. I never looked back at that creepy hotel, and I never forgot the feeling of unease that lingered with me for days after. If you're on a road trip, make sure you have road assistance of some kind. It could save you from a situation that you don't want. Welcome to the Hotel Delphine, he said in a monotone voice. Oh wait, that wasn't monotone, was it? So I quiet, quietly, <laughs> so I quiet, <laughs> um, so I quietly, <laughs> oh man. All that was going through my mind was some crazy squatter, squatter, squatter. 